Okay, but I'm gonna try to do as best I can. See, this thing will hold up. But I'm here to uh, review Kim Possible. What's the switch for the PS2? Uh, I don't know if anybody's reviewed this shit or not. Uh, but this game is actually pretty fun. I mean, I got this game. Um, if you watch my video, my Amazon.com video the other day, I got this through Amazon.com, courtesy of FYI or Trans World or whatever you want to call it. And it's actually a pretty fun game. Um, it's a side scroller, so if anybody likes side scrolling games, like I'm pretty sure James Wolf likes side scrolling games, it is that kind. Of, it is a good side scrolling game. The thing about it is, it's got a 3D kind of perspective to it, if you will. It's not like straight. It's not like the old 8-bit or 16-bit games, where it's just like do 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 straight through. You're just looking at a lot. You're just going straight. It's like when you go to one area, you turn. You actually do like a a a, a 3D 3D ish turn. And that's it's pretty fun. It's actually pretty unique. And then of course you have the enemies popping up from the background over towards you. Sometimes it's like okay, this one scene, this one stage, we have Shigo um, riding on these cars and trucks, and she's got to jump from one car. She's got to get from one car to the other to get to you know basically move on with the stage. And what happens is you have these guys coming in from like the side, like from the left side. You know, she's on the right, right side. Here's some enemies from the left side jumping right from one truck over to where she is or throwing bombs at her, then going over to where she is. Um, it's very, you know, it is a little trick. I will say this, it's kind of tricky if you haven't played it before. And believe me, it's my first time I ever played it. And so far it is a little tricky. It can be a little tricky. You gotta basically have to figure out what controller, what buttons will do what on the PS2. Uh, for example, the the triangle button, the green triangle, uh, basically allows you to kick. And you gotta crouch down and slide. You crouch down, you press down, you press the uh, triangle button, and you could slide across to avoid some obstacles. Um, the X button is basically for jumping, so you want to make sure you get in a good position to jump back and forth, kind of like a ninja guiding kind of thing. Uh, the the circle, I believe, is for throwing things. And by throwing things, first of all, you gotta use the R2 buttons, the L2, L2 or R2, the L2 or R2 buttons, or even the L1 or R R1 buttons whenever, but mostly R2 and L2, I believe, to select something out of your communicator that Wade will give you, that Wade, that Wade will give you, and then you use the red circle button to throw that item, and most of the times that will come in handy, or use that item. Like, for example, you'll have, uh, one of the things that might frustrate some people at first is the, is not being able to get through certain, certain doors. There will be like these little light things right before. You got to look for these little light things on the wall. These little things that would be yellow. It'll be like in the second, second stage or second level, second stage. Age of view. Not the first level. Not the first three levels. But mostly like in the second stage or something like that. But they'll be there. And what you have to do is you'll be you'll have to select a stick of gum that Wade will give you. And you don't just throw this at the enemies to kind of keep to get them stuck. You throw them at them. Because basically the gum helps you cause the enemies to stick, and you can basically beat them up easily there. Uh, but you also can use it to throw out these little uh, buttons, if you will, that will help you open up the door. Uh, also, you can break doors down. you got to make sure you get a good combination of it. Uh, you could use the uh, X button as well as, I think, the triangle button or something like that to jump up. And then jump down for to break some doors going straight down. If you got if you got to go straight down, it's like you, the X button is your jump button. And basically, you gotta press that, and I think press down and or uh, something like that. Press the X button in the triangle, I think, and maybe down. I'm not sure. I got I think it's down. I think you do have to do down. I'm not really sure yet. Well, I am sure, but I'm not sure. I can't remember because I had to do it a couple of times. But basically, the primary buttons are X and triangle to break through the down the down to go downwards through the kind of breakable uh, doors on the on the floor these breakable floor panels so you got to do that and uh, once you get the hang of a lot of the stuff there you know because it takes a while to get, get the hang of it 
But once you get the hang of it, you, 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 it's pretty much smooth sailing. I mean, I haven't completed the game, I will say that, and I know some people might say, well, why didn't you complete the game? I'm getting there. I, I'm going to get there, don't worry. It's going to take time. It's my first time playing it, so uh, I'm, it's going to take time for me to do that. Uh, but it's very, very unique. It's a, like I said, it's a unique game, because like I said, it's, not, it's a traditional side-scroller, but the side-scroller is a lot different. It's got that three-dimensional kind of feel, because you turn when you're going down a section, going down a certain road and all that, or, or stuff like that. It's got that three-dimensional feel with enemies coming from the background up to where you are, or throwing stuff at you. Uh, another unique perspective about it is you could actually sw is you actually switch back and forth. You got two stories you basically got to play, two sides of the story you got to play. Uh, you start off you start off of course as Kim, you know, which is the obvious, and then after you after the main focus of the story begins, which is basically trying to switch the minds of Draken and Ron back to the rightful bodies. Uh, you basically start to go back and forth. You go from well, actually, that's actually no, 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 that's not that's not correct. I'm sorry about that. I was thinking ahead of myself. Basically, what you got to do first is okay. Ron gets you know Ron falls down his trap door, so you got to go through this castle to get to this monkey idol thing or whatever it is, and. Basically, as you're getting, like, as you do the first level or two, first level or two, or something like that, after, like, a, a level or two that you complete, then you switch over to a cutscene with Draken and Shigo, and basically you start playing as Shigo after that to complete the rest of the mission, to basically get to the idol. And then after that, that's when it starts really going back and forth between them, because they got to basically help set the mines back into the rightful owners of uh, Draken and, and Ron. But it's, again, it's really unique because it allows you to go back and forth. It's like, and it also keeps you on your toes because, like, if you're playing as Kim, you're just running through, you know, the levels. You know, you're just running through doing a side scrolling thing. You're running through it. Uh, but then, like with Shigo, like I mentioned earlier, you could go from, you know, Kim being on the side scrolling, kind of running and all that on her feet. You can go from that, and then all of a sudden you're jumping right into, the next thing you know, you're playing as Shigo, and you're on the cars, jumping from one car to another. And again, the controllers, once you get the hang of them, are kind of easy to get used to once you get the hang of it. They're quite easy to uh, uh, play and everything, so it's really, really, a, a really fun game that you should pick up. I mean, I'm not complaining about it right now, and I probably never will, because... You know, it takes time, and you want to take your time with these kind of games. And so far, I've had a lot of fun with this, because it's it's kind of it's kind of unique figuring out what kind of different levels you got to go through to to complete this mission. But um, it's not just that, but it's how I, I love how they allow you to switch back and forth, and like I say, it keeps you on your toes because it's like okay, you're Kim and you're doing this, and then when you switch to Shigo, you're like. You're like on a car. Let me get a, a, a visual representation here for you. Where it's like, okay, you're Kim. You're on. A, you're running like this. But then when you're Shigo, you're on a car, and uh, you're like this. You're on the car, literally. You're on the car, and it's, you know, it's just moving like that. It's like, it's like, here's you. It's like, okay, here's Kim on one level, and then all of a sudden it will switch you right to Shigo. And then here's Seagull on a car going from one car to another to another to another. That's how it is. And again, I think it's really a really fun aspect about this game because it keeps you on your toes and it's not hard. I mean, yeah, you may, okay, basically with the car level on Shigo is later on during that, when you get to the other parts of the car stage, you're going to have to jump over some wooden billboards or wooden overpasses or duck under some wooden overpasses or else you're going to lose some life. The same thing is when you go to this clock tower kind of deal. You got to make sure you don't get hit by certain parts of the clock. Clock. Um, uh, uh, I can't even think of Clark. The, the, the gears, basically. The clock gears. You got to make sure you don't get hit by those or else you're going to lose life. Um, but again, it, 
a lot it's a lot of fun and again it's not that frustrating um, it does give you a lot a lot of things can be picked up here you got basically you got to pick up a certain amount of communicators to pet to I don't know what it is but they give you a total of how many commu communicators or Kim Kim communicators Kim communicators if you will to pick up or to collect as well as they give you some hearts and all that to help replenish your life the hearts basically I think you got to gather a certain amount of hearts small hearts with like a little pink uh, circle around them, a pink glow around them, before you get a big heart with a red glow around it, and then that gives you an extra life. So, overall, it is, so far from what I've seen, it's a very fun game, very easy to, you know, pick up and play once you learn the controllers and everything, once you learn how to control the game and, mm -hmm. and such. So, I highly recommend, if you can get this, get this right now. You can find it at Amazon.com. It's a good price. I got this for about five ninety nine or five sixty nine, five dollars sixty nine cents. Very good price. Look at it. Try finding it on Amazon. Try finding it at your local Toys R Us. Order it online if you have to at Walmart, Target, or wherever. And I guarantee you, you as a if you're a Kim Possible fan, this is definitely a, a game to pick up and enjoy. Um, but if you're just a fan of Disney games in general, this is a good game to pick up as well. And if you're just a fan of side-scrolling action and you like to have a challenge, but it's not that much of a challenge, but more like an eased back kind of challenge, this is definitely a game to try out, um, try, try your hands at. So, And the cutscenes are not you know, traditionally animated like you would see in the series. It's kind of, it's Beno, Beno Vista games, Beno Vista games, so... Uh, that, that'll give you an idea. It's kind of more computer generated for, at that time. You know, not like, you know, it's not Final Fantasy CGI, I'll say that. <laughs> it's basically animation, CGI kind of game style. So, I'm pretty sure you can find clips of this game here on YouTube. So, if you do, check them out and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about of how good this game is and how fun it can be. So, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, the rating I give for this is an 8 out of 10. And I know you might be thinking, well, why not a 10 out of 10? Well, an 8 out of 10 because I think they could have done better with the cutscenes and everything. And, you know, it, you know, that's about it, I could say. And, it, like I said, it's a, it's a little tricky to figure out at first, but once you do, it's easy to pick up and play. But 8 out of 10, mostly because they could have done better with the cutscenes. And uh, that's all I'm going to say. And comment down below. Tell me what you think. Video responses are greatly appreciated. I'm sorry I didn't have any actual footage. Um, but hey. You know. I'm just me. I do it the way I, I can. So take my word for it. Check out any footage you can find here on YouTube. And I guarantee you. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to this game. And that's all I'm going to say. God bless. Take care. Video responses and comments are greatly appreciated. Take care.